All right. The office of the New York Attorney General has said that uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo sexually harassed women in violation of uh, not only law, but policies that were put in place in some cases, decades ago. Uh, no response as yet from the governor nor from President Biden, who said back in March that if an investigation confirmed any of these claims against the governor, that he should resign. And quoting here, I think he'd probably end up being prosecuted, too. Brian Yenis has been following, actually, from the very beginning, this fast-moving story. Joins us now with the very latest. Hey, Brian. Hey, Neil. Well, look, this is shocking in terms of the detail of the report and just how large it is. It's about 165 pages. They interviewed 179 current and former employees, 74,000 pieces of contemporaneous evidence, including emails and text messages, all coming to one conclusion, that New York Governor Andrew Cuomo sexually harassed multiple women that worked for him, uh, 11 women, uh, and that ultimately he violated laws. Here's Attorney General Letitia James moments ago. These interviews and pieces of evidence reveal a deeply disturbing yet clear picture. Governor Cuomo sexually harassed current and former state employees in violation of both federal and state laws. Some of the details here in terms of the women is pretty shocking. Uh, we knew about the executive assistant who was groped by the governor in the executive mansion. This report by independent investigators found that that was substantiated, as well as a new uh, report from a state trooper who was part of his security detail who says that the governor touched her stomach. That was something that was also new. It's not just the touching. There was also a substantiated and corroborated uh, reports here of, of him really saying unwelcomed and, and inappropriate sexual comments to these women and that there was retaliation as well against people who came forward or even said anything against him. Over the last five months, Neil, we have heard the governor talk about, well, when he first came out in early March, apologizing for all of this. He said that he was sorry for making the women uncomfortable, but he denied touching anybody. But over the last few months, his tune has changed, and he's been calling this investigation a political witch hunt. Listen. The attorney general is doing an independent review, and I will fully cooperate with that review. I have concerns as to the uh, independence of the reviewers. Uh, that's what I've said. And is politics, uh, is this all happening in a political system? Yes, that is undeniable. So it went from wait for the facts to this is a political witch hunt. A statement now from the state assembly speaker here in New York, Carl Hasty, a Democrat. He released a statement that said in part, the findings contained in the report are disturbing. The details provided by the victims are gut-wrenching. Our hearts go out to all the individuals who have had to endure this horrible experience. The conduct by the governor outlined in this report would indicate someone who is not fit for office. And that is a big deal. The reason is, is that what happens next? No criminal charges from the AG's office. This is a report. It is now up to these victims to go uh, the civil route, or they can go the criminal route on their own. Uh, but in terms of what happens to the governor, this all lands in the state assemblies, uh, in the state assembly's quarters. They now need to decide whether or not they're going to impeach the governor. An impeachment investigation is underway. Carl Hasty, the state assembly is speaker, that is his strongest statement yet. And he said previously, before this report came out, that this report alone wouldn't be enough to impeach him. Perhaps with the detail that we just heard, it seems like that tune has definitely changed. The governor, Neil, by the way, has said he's been eager to tell his side of the story. We'll see if he does that today. Neil. All right. Thank you for that, Brian Yenis.